24 teams will start the competition, but who will win Euro 2020 starts today? Obviously delayed uh, a little bit. Uh, we're joined in the studio by former Scotland manager Alex McLeish. We also have former England manager Sam Allardyce and Welsh striking legend John Hartson netted 14 goals for the Dragons. Good morning to all of you this morning. So we already heard a little bit from Alex. He feels like Scotland are in a really good moment. He feels like they've been a, a great team, a great, great chance. Let's come to you, uh, John, because, of course, the Welsh... Uh, are taking part in this tournament as well. And they did so brilliantly the last Euros. What are your expectations for your team this year? Well, again, Ben, uh, it's a difficult group. Um, international football, you know, in, you know, winning games at international level is not easy. Uh, we had a wonderful time in, uh, in France uh, for five years ago now, got to the semi-final, as you, as you alluded to. Um, Switzerland, and then we have Turkey uh, midweek. Switzerland tomorrow... Turkey midweek, and then we uh, the third game in the group is Italy in Rome uh, next Sunday. So I think it's imperative you get off to a really good start. This is Hal Robson Carno against Belgium in the quarter final of the of the Euros in I mean, 2016. I'm, and this I, is I'm watching Sam, that goal Sam again though. That goal, Hal Robson Carno. I remember working with Cami the next day <clears> and him <throat> talking about that. Hal Robson Carno sent the whole of the Belgian team out for a cup of tea when he did that little back fit. <laughs> Have you ever seen <laughs> yeah, a better goal on an international stage at that point against what was one of the strongest teams in the tournament? Well, he's capable of, he's capable of that, Hal robson Carno. Sam would know. Sam's just uh, finished working yeah. with him, obviously, at West Brom. And he, he, he is capable of to produce moments like that, is Hal robson Carno. And it was absolutely wonderful, you know, Belgium full of magnificent world-class players and we turned them over 3-1 in the quarter-final and it was just a great, great moment in Welsh football history mm. and it was a shame because when we got to the semi-final against Ronaldo's Portugal, we had no Aaron Ramsey and we had no Ben Davis so Chris Coleman had to adjust a little bit to the team because we'd had that fluency all yeah. the way through um, so they were big players that, that we lost that night. Uh, Sam, let's come to you because, of course, you know, there is always expectation when England play. There's expectation because we've been talking about it a lot. We've got a great crop of young players, certainly attacking talent. How excited are, uh, are you for England's chances? Well, absolutely, Ben. I think that the excitement um, can be an understatement. I think it's a little bit mysterious across the country as always when the international tournament takes place. And I think this squad... I think, personally, is the strongest squad in the in the, the whole of the European competition this uh, uh, this summer. And I think that maybe the maybe not the best eleven, maybe somebody like France or Belgium may have the best eleven. But in terms of uh, positioning, there's a fantastic player in each position, Gareth has. So has he got any problems? He can change very comfortably. Uh, and if he wants to rest a player, there's equally just as good a player can step in and do a job for him. So I think balancing up the team versus huge attacking ability with defensive stability will be a, a, a challenge for him. And obviously picking the first team will be very, very interesting against the old rivals, Croatia, because they have a score to settle there. Yeah, we do from the semi-final. Yeah, um, and Alex, here in the studio, um, we were saying before, was it first Euros for Scotland since 96, which is the one that really... Yeah. I know, I know. It's a, it's a hideous thought, isn't it, uh, for you? But, but you, you feel that this side has got something different, different sort of confidence. Are there particular players you're looking forward to seeing play? Yeah, I do, um, because there's, I think there's 14 of the squad, I think it's, that's the, the correct number, that are playing in England and in two of the, the biggest leagues, supported leagues in the world, the English Premier, probably the richest league in the world, and probably the, the best, for the best players at the moment. Hang on a minute. That was the one the Scots were saying something good about England. <laughs> and football. <laughs> I'm going to have to just sit back now. Well, well, <laughs> you know, I was going to take it on to say that I think we'll, we're going to beat you next week. Oh, you well, really? Do you really? <laughs> well, listen, England, as, as Sam says, I think England must be big favourites for the competition. Really? Yeah, I think so. So I'm putting that pressure on Gareth, <laughs> on Gareth and, uh, hope, you know, but hopefully Scotland have a, a fantastic tournament. Uh, I, I think... You know, what would be success for Scotland at this tournament? Well, definitely qualification yeah. from the group stage. Um, they play the Czech Republic. It's not going to be an easy game, but we play at Hamden, Glasgow, and, yeah. and the Czechs, you know, Suchek and Kufa, who, who have had great seasons for West Ham. They have. Your team. I know. 
They've yeah. lit up the Premier. I'm really excited to see them play in the international side as well because he has been Suchek particularly as a sort of a, has has hit the ground running, hasn't he? He's been yeah, absolutely brilliant. Uh, I, Sam, I wonder, you know, when you look at it as as sort of a, an Englishman and a former England manager, the game that's got all of us mouth watering, and maybe we'll go for some balance to John with this as well, is that England Scotland game. It's been too long since it's happened in a competitive environment. How do you see it going? Well, I think it depends on what the results are in the first game. Ben, I think that um, if England beat the Czechs, uh, sorry, if Scotland beat the Czech Republic and England beat Croatia, what a game it's going to be. I mean, not only is it the old rivalry come together, but probably the winner of that game will probably win the group. So mm. I think that that, uh, that uh, game, looking forward to that game, I certainly hope both teams have actually won the first game, which will make it even more interesting when they play each other. And of course, having fans there, there's going to be a big difference. And I think that the, the fans and the excitement of the fans, even though it won't be full, the stadiums won't be full, the atmosphere will still be absolutely electric. Yeah. And, and I imagine and Monday morning will be interesting Yeah, as well. dusty, <laughs> around the country. Uh, John, <clears throat> what, I mean, uh, from, a, from a Welshman's perspective, what are, the, what are your hopes for Wales at this tournament? What would be considered success? Is it qualification from the group? Yes, I think so. And obviously then if you get a favourable draw in the last 16, like we did in, um, in France four, uh, five years ago now, we played Northern Ireland in the last 16. We beat them 1-0, very close game. And all of a sudden then, Ben, you find yourselves in the quarterfinal. And, mm. you know, with that little bit of momentum and the ascendancy you take into the games, um, you know, you never know. Uh, as I said, you get a little bit of luck going through the tournament. But... Have you heard some of the reports, Ben? Uh, apparently, England have already won it. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, oh, is, that, is that your prediction then, John? Are you saying England are going to win it? Well, they've got great players. As Sam said, they've got you know, wonderful players in there to choose from, haven't they? You look at the likes of Harry Kane and Sancho and Grealish, you know, wonderful, wonderful players. Um, but... You know, as I said, uh, there's other great teams. We played Wales, played France last week, and their front three was Benzema, Griezmann, and then Papi. You know, you look at the Portugal team as well, the current holders of the tournament, of course. They won it in 2016. And obviously, Belgium. Belgium are the big sort of disappointments, really, in recent major tournaments. But, you know, they've got a click at some stage. But, of course, you know, don't, don't write out Wales and, and Scotland either. Not at all. Wouldn't right. agree with that. One word from all of you. Uh, Alex, who's going to win the tournament? The tournament, I would... One word. I think Italy. Italy. Big Sam, who's going to win? It's got to be England. It's got to be England. Big John? France. France for John. It's mm -hmm. great to have you all here. Thank you so much. It's lovely to have you in the studio as well, Alex. Thanks we, for having me. Our yes. pleasure. Uh, Someone we will be sure... saying something different. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. coming up in a moment, is it, Lorraine? Yeah, absolutely. It's great to see you all. Uh, the first match uh, will take place tonight, 8 p.m., when Turkey take on Italy. And you can follow all the action from the Euros on ITV. The first live game on ITV will be Belgium against Russia on Saturday at 8 p.m.